I'm David DeLeon, and I'm here with my beautiful model, Ashley Peterson. And today we're going to do a corrective beauty, but I think we're going to do a little bit more of a um, evening look. So we're going to really play up her gorgeous eyes and a gorgeous mouth. And um, let's get started. Um, oh, first of all, about, uh, if you haven't seen my interview yet on MUA TV, um, I am David DeLeon. Uh, I'm a makeup artist, uh, primarily television and film. I also do uh, print work and commercial work. Um, and uh, I'm going to kind of, as we go through it, explain the difference between the different mediums. Um, for me, it's basically degrees of intensity. Um, if you're doing stage, um, of course, the makeup is going to be much broader, stronger. If you're doing print, it can be just about anything you want. It can be, ex you know, a no makeup look to a very extreme glamorous look, and of course, you know, everyday life and uh, different lighting uh, setups that you'll be in uh, call for different types of makeup. But really, the principles are the same. Um, it just depends on what the lighting situation is, and you know, how many people are watching you, and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to start with a foundation. We've already prepped her skin. Um, foundations basically come in an array of uh, formulas. There are liquids, which can have an oil base, a silicone base, a water base, um, which can work with different skin types. You know, whether your skin is oily or dry or combination, there's different type, types of makeups in every line that will address those things. Um, there's also cream makeups, which are more of a solid cream form. Um, not so much for oily skin, although they can be used um, depending on the type of oil that is in the cream. Um, and we have powder foundations. Uh, again, not so great for really dry skin because you want to moisturize that skin and keep it creamy and smooth. So it just really depends on the skin that you have, what the problems are or issues are. Um, Ashley's got pretty much uh, what would you say you are, a combination skin? Yeah. So I'm going to use actually a cream on her. Uh, it's actually a stick foundation. We want to just sort of even out everything. Um, she's uh, it's got a very nice skin tone, so we're not going to really change that too much. We're just going to enhance it. And uh, let's get started with the base. I'm applying the base with a sponge, latex sponge, starting at the top. Make sure to, uh, I, I like to use all the different sides of my sponge just to blend everything off. You don't want to, she has blonde hair, so of course I don't want to get makeup into her hair, but I want to blend it off into the hairline. Working my way down. Now a lot of times, uh, you know, there's different ways to do it. Some people will do the corrections first, the under eye, you know, highlighting and different things. A lot of times I like to put the base on first to see what it's going to do. You know, that can save a lot of time. And uh, not having to do a real heavy base is always nice. It's fun. A lot of people ask how, you know, Movie stars look so gorgeous all the time in movies and on television. And the answer is they have makeup people. We go in, sometimes every shot, sometimes every three shots, check the makeup, make sure they're powdered, make sure everything is smooth, make sure everything is, you know, the way it looked when they left the trailer in the morning. And that goes on all day long. So that's one of the reasons why they look so great the average person doesn't have a uh, makeup and hair team that follows them around. Otherwise, they look fantastic all the time. Now, you notice I'm going in a downward motion. I know we're always taught to go upwards when we do creams and, and different things. The reason, and I'm not doing a lot of pressure, so I'm not really pulling the skin too tight. The reason is everyone has little what are called vellus hairs on their face, everyone. And when you go in a downward motion, 
it just sort of makes sure that the hair is all sort of down and it's much easier to smooth out a makeup that way and of course to apply powders or anything else that you're going to do afterwards. I'm blending under the jaw. I'm not going to take it all the way down, but you want to blend it off. So take your sponge. I'm, I'm using two different sides of it to blend in. Make sure you get the eyelids. Some people like to use eyeshadow primers, and they do work. Um, I find just a nice cream um, concealer or any concealer, sometimes just the base works very well also. What you want is an even surface to work on and that's another thing that foundation does. Evens out not only the tone but also evens out the level of oil and the level of dryness. I'm taking this all the way up to the lower lash line, I'm blending and blending. Now Ashley's very lucky now that I'm floating around her mouth. This is her natural lip color. She has beautiful lips and a beautiful natural tone. So we're not going to have to do a lot of corrective on her mouth. A lot of times when I'm doing the base, I'm sort of examining the face seeing where I want to go with the makeup, what my next step is going to be, all the while moving the sponge around the face. And I'm not using a lot of base. Very, very small amount. I'm just taking just a little from the edge of my uh, scrapings here because you don't have to do a lot of makeup to get a nice coverage. You just have to do a very thorough, even application and keep blending. That's the key. Next, I'm going to do a little bit of concealing under the eye. Now, when you do concealing, you don't always have to go all the way around the eye. You don't want that owl look. So <clears throat> a lot of times I'll just see where the darkest part is. And in Ashley's case, it's like almost everybody. Just a little bit in the inner corner under here. And I'm also going to take some of my highlight on the outer just to lift the outer corner of the eye and highlight the top of the cheekbone. This is also a cream, so it'll blend in nicely with what we've already put down. Take my sponge. And blend those edges. I got them? Very, very gentle under the eyes. Smoothing with my brush. Just for thoroughness. Close your eyes. I'm going to take a little bit of that concealer up actually onto the eyelid itself. And this will act as a really nice backdrop for our shadows. Notice I'm using the back of my finger just to lift her brow a little bit to make sure that I get a nice, smooth, even coating. I'm not disturbing the makeup this way. I'm going to highlight. She doesn't have much at all, the nasal labial fold. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of highlight right in there just to soften that shadow. I 
There's just a little bit of redness around the nose. We'll just take care of that. I'm just going over little tiny veins or pores or anything we didn't get with the base. Again, we're not trying to create a mask. We're just trying to smooth what she has and enhance it. All right, now I'm gonna do a little bit of shading. She has a beautiful oval-shaped face. Um, she's got great cheekbones. I'm just gonna enhance that a little bit, put a little shade under the jaw. Um, a little bit on the nose, just a little bit on the side. She's got a beautiful shaped nose. I mean, I've got, I'm very lucky with this one. Um, what I'm going to use is a dark taupe to shade. You want to be very careful with the color that you use in a shader. Anything that's too yellow or too orange or too gold is going to show up. Um, it's actually more of a blush tone. So you want something that's going to actually be a shade tone. I'm just going to go in under her cheekbone. Just following the natural line. Take my handy dandy sponge. And I'm going to blend the bottom edge just so it's a soft blend with her skin. And that's really the intensity that you want. I wouldn't go any harder or stronger. Um, unless, of course, you were doing something for stage, then you could go much stronger than that. You could go much stronger with all of the highlights and shadows, but uh, not for this today. Right under the jawline, I'm just following her natural bones, just enhancing that. Blending the edge. I'm not taking off the whole thing. I'm just going the bottom edge to feather that off. So we still have that nice little bit of shading in there. I'm going to go on to the other side. Now you notice I haven't powdered yet. When you're working with creams, you want to make sure that you get all of your cream products on before you powder because the powder will set everything. And once you put the powder on, it's kind of difficult. It's not impossible, but it's more difficult to work with other cream products after that. So I like to get everything on there that's going to be the same type of product, and then I powder. Again, Ashley's got a very lovely shape to her nose, so I'm not really trying to change it at all. I'm just refining it a little bit. And with her, I don't want to shorten her nose, and I don't want to really elongate it too much. So I'm just going to keep it right on the side, again, enhancing what's already there. Blend that edge off. Now, of course, when you're working with sponges, sometimes you uh, wipe off a little bit of what you put on. So just go back in and double check. Make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to do a little rouge. I love cream blushes also. They're really pretty. Um, there's a few ways to do it. We've already shaped the face with the shading, so I'm not going to do a, a shading with the rouge. I want to just sort of do it in the front of the face or the apples just to give a little color and, and brightness to the face. So smile for me. Just right. You naturally would blush. This is a real pretty kind of sheer apricot peach color. Now I'm going to set all of this with a little powder. I'm using a puff. You can use 
a brush. You can use a uh, makeup sponge. There's no steadfast rule. I like a puff just because it smooths everything out and I'm not really affecting the makeup at all. Now there's a little bit of oil on the lid, so before I set that, I'm going to go back over with my brush and just smooth it all out. I'm going to take a little bit of loose powder on a brush. Look up for me. Just to set that a little bit more. It's easier to get in there with a, a brush than the puff. And again, smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. It's so important to keep smoothing your base and your makeup as you go along. So next up, I'm going to um, just do a little bit of shaping on the brows, coloring I should say. I'm not going to tweeze her brows, they're already beautiful. Just take a little brush, brush them up. This is a soft, kind of a medium brown, warm because she's got golden hair. And this is an actual eyeshadow. Again, with brows, you can use eyeshadows, you can use specific brow powders, you can use uh, pencils, gels. There's a whole array of things for eyebrows, really depending on what you uh, are working with. Again, Ashley's got nice brows, <clears throat> so I don't have to recreate them, actually. I'm just enhancing what's there. I'm going to do sort of a kind of a smoky evening eye on her. Mm. I think she's got these gorgeous killer green mm. cat eyes. So the first color I'm going to put down is kind of a bronzy gold. It's got a touch of red, if you can believe that, rather than yellow because Ashley has green eyes. Red is a complementary color to green, so it'll really make that pop. You could also do purples, um, are also great with green eyes. Anything that has a red sort of undertone to it is really, really nice. Now I'm going to go in with a nice warm brown. I'm going to do this along the lash line, making sort of an inverted V, I guess you'd call it. I'm going to take a little bit of that warm brown on a round brush. To create what we call a dropped shadow. And that gives it that kind of smoky, sexy, it's not a hard line. Now, I'm going to go in with an even darker brown with my round brush. The fun thing about using frosted shadows for a smoky look is it really kind of is the idiot's way of blending because when you, when you uh, put a matte against a frost, the frost diffuses the edge. So it's much easier to get a, a nice sort of uh, blended look without having to overwork the eyes so much. And just smoothing my base again, always making sure it's nice and smooth. Now you notice I've got almost no drop under there. I don't load my brushes up with so much product that I have to worry too much about everything running down the face. Now if you were doing a really, really intense, strong, you know, smoky or graphic eye, 
sometimes what a lot of makeup artists will do is they will actually do the eyeshadow before they do the base. So if you know you're going to have a lot of drop if you're using like black shadow or things like that. Um, you can do the eyes first, clean up underneath, then put your base and your concealers and all that on. That's another way to do it. Um, but we lucked out. We didn't have any of that. Now I'm going to just highlight her brow bone a little bit. She doesn't need a lot of reshaping. It's already there, so I'm not going to push the obvious, so to say, so to speak. And again, I'm working with matte and shimmer. So the, really the only shimmer we have is the first color I put on. Everything else has been a matte shadow, which is also kind of a cool way to, to do eyeshadows rather than everything being shiny, 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 because it draws your eye everywhere. This way, it's, we're really just drawing our eye to what we want to see, which is that beautiful warm lid and those gorgeous green eyes. I'm going to add a couple of eyeliners. Close to me. First one is a chocolate bronze. Very soft, big fat pencil. Just along the lash line. This is one of those cool pencils that has a blender on the end. Gonna take a little bit underneath, right along that lower lash line. Just give a little more pop of shape and color there. Now, I'm actually not going to use any black. You could, but I'm finding, because her eyes are such an intense color and they're light eyes, you really don't need a lot to make them pop and to give a real sort of glamorous look. So I'm going to stop with the bronzy liners on her. I think they look great. Move on to some lashes. First, we're going to curl the lashes. You don't, of course, this is not a step you always have to do. It depends on what type of lashes you want, what type of effect. Ashley's got uh, very straight lashes. She's got long ones, but they're a little straight. So look down for me. I lift the lid. Go in. Is there any skin? No. Hold. Peg it out a little bit further. Squeeze, a little bit further, squeeze, and that gives us a little bit of a rounder curl than if you just go in and do the base. Look down. Any skin? No. Nope. Squeeze, hold for about three seconds. Hold down the shaft a little bit, squeeze, hold. We'll get the end there. There we go. Okay? Yep. Great. I'm going to do just a gorgeous black mascara. You could use bronze. You could use dark brown. Now, before that dries, I'm going to take a clean brush. These are called, I call them spoolies. I don't know what they're actually supposed to be called, but you can get them at any beauty supply. Um, and they're just clean brushes. I'm just going to comb through. Get any clumps out. Get them going the direction I want them to go. That's good. Now, you can do you know, as many coats as you like with this technique. Um, but I'm going to add some individual false eyelashes on her just to give a little more pop to the eye. And that kind of keeps us from having to put so many layers and layers of uh, mascara on, which can get a little clumpy. These are individual lashes. It's a medium length. Um, you know, again, depending on the length of your own lashes or your client's lashes, there's an array of styles and lengths and, and types. Uh, these are clusters, so they have like, um, I don't know, eight or ten hairs to each cluster, and they're put on in little clumps. I always like to apply lashes with the eyes open and looking down. That way it stretches the lid. 
and when you have the eye open, you're not going to have the danger of gluing the eyes, the top to the bottom lashes, because that can happen sometimes. Now, I'm not going to take them all the way across. Again, it's just kind of preference. She's got long enough lashes. I'm just filling them in. So I'm just going to do like three quarters of the way. I'm going to take a little bit of my mascara. Let's start on this side. Just to join the two together a little bit. This is really what's left over on the uh, wand. Any little teeny bits of anything. Also, you always want to keep a lift to the eye. So everything I've applied, I haven't applied past this line of the lower lash up in this direction. I keep that clean because it keeps the eyes lifted. I don't necessarily have to paint everything in that uh, extreme direction. But if I keep this area clean and open, it really gives a lift to the eye. Now we already did a cream rouge. I'm going to put just a little bit of a powder blush on her. Same place as the cream, the apples. I'll warm up the face a little bit, a little across the forehead. Sometimes you can even take just a little dab on that brow bone just to warm everything up. Now, she doesn't have any, any corrections in her mouth. Her mouth is beautifully colored and it's beautifully shaped, so we lucked out. We're just going to do a little bit of color. This is a fun sort of a shimmery peach. And we've got most of the emphasis on the eyes, so I don't want to really do anything hard or overdone on the mouth. We really just want to showcase her beautiful eyes. The nice thing is we've used a little bit of a shimmer, which complements the shimmer that we put on the eyes. Again, always, always, always blending. I don't want any makeup-related wrinkles. <laughs> back to the mouth. Now just kind of look at everything for balance. I'm going to just sharpen her lip line. So I'm just going to go on the top of her lip line with a little bit of that concealer. And around the edges here my sponge and blend the outer edge. It's a nice way to sort of shape lips without using a lip liner. Make sure we're nice and matte. And voila, there you go. I'm <laughs> <Excited>. <laughs>